I don't have a funny or wholesome one-liner for this video. Instead, the only piece of media I'm going to give you to set the mood for this video is a gif, gif, gif? A gif of the most accurate representation of how it feels to chew five gum. What it feels like to play breaches in VR. Starting out, the tutorial is quite lengthy, but by the end of it you understand why. I say that not with the intentions of pushing new players away, but to highlight just how many purposeful mechanics and gadgets there are. So yeah, you run around a warehouse uh, in the tutorial being waved at and instructed by a drone that reminds me of a VCR that your mum used to own when I did a... I heard somewhere that the developers for this game, Triangle Factory, wanted to recreate a Rainbow Six Siege, albeit without the agents with specific gadgets and abilities. They've made the gadgets widely available to all 10 players, but limiting how many of each can be deployed on the map at one time, which I think is a great system. After training was complete, I decided to play some casual bomb defusal, and honestly, it felt really good. The movement is so standardised and feels as it should, smooth and direct. Games like Contractors VR make use of the infamous jump, sprint and slide mechanics. Now although that does make for some very enjoyable and cod-like gameplay, it rewards an aggressive playstyle. In Breaches, it's a bit more methodical. You can't just sprint straight through a door and expect to kill three people just because you slide cancel. It has its place. In Breaches, a more careful approach is required, one that encourages teamwork and well-timed play use of carefully placed gadgets, etc. It is in this point in the script I realise I'm literally comparing the VR equivalent of COD and Rainbow Six Siege, but moving on. The leaning system is very intuitive. It shows you a square on the floor that represents your character's centre, and you can see as you start to lean. The square stays in the original position and lets me know if I'm about to trip over my massive penis while ducking in and out of cover. Nice car. There are three maps currently for the standard bomb defusal game mode and one map for team deathmatch. I get the sense that a lot of love went into these maps. The feeling you get when you're rappelling down the skyscraper and overlooking a city nightscape or preparing to breach a private mansion somewhere in the mountain range. It is intense. The atmosphere invites you to immerse yourself and if you do it, it most likely pays off. The utility that you will use to either attack or defend a site vary for both sides. Attackers will get things like breaching foam and drones for intel. Great, the device is now armed. Take a few steps back and smash the button with your other hand to blow up the wall. The defenders will get items like door blockers, trip mines, and things of that nature. There are also common grenades and heals that both teams can buy to keep it peaceful. Although, as I said, the number of each gadget that each team has is limited, so one person can't buy five heals at once, giving an obvious unfair advantage. Which brings me to my next point, balance. A game like this can't thrive without balance. It must be unequivocally a fair game for both teams if it is to have any hope of bringing VR esports back into consideration. The last memorable esports event for VR in my opinion was the Onward Invitational, uh, which was like four years ago. It was a LAN event and it looked like it cost way too much to set up for very little return. Considering Onward got nuked after the request downgrade patch, I'm watching the video back now and even the graphics didn't look half as good as what breaches have been able to achieve, albeit with smaller, more condensed maps. In saying that, the developers obviously know this, the guns are the same for both teams, the economy rewards are very fair, the game runs smooth as butter, and servers seem to do an okay job of mediating the ping difference between most of the Americans I play with. It still feels like you have a chance to outplay the enemy. Time to kill is very similar to Siege, a well-placed headshot is incredibly satisfying. Crosshair placement is key in games like these, VR or panel. That's why the feeling of ADS needs to be efficient and comprehensible. Crouching is snappy and can get you a nice advantage. The one thing I would change is the proximity sensor that the devs clearly recorded by standing next to a Prius and hitting it with a hammer. Now the players that you will find in this game range from 60 year old chad gamers to 12 year old in-game leaders. The other team can no. see it. Yes, I know. 
positivity is the driving factor here. Just like in CSGO, Valorant, and Siege, if you have one person who throws on purpose, that's basically GG's. You are only as good as the weakest link in your team. On the other side of that coin, if you have a team that smoothly gels through a compound and communications are good, everyone's vibing, when everything lines up, it makes for some of the best tactical shooter experiences I've ever had. All in all, Breaches is the game for when you want Rainbow Six Siege trapped to your game at Melon. It had a great launch, I've had a lot of fun streaming this one. The only thing I can truly fault on it is that there are no robust Australian women running around as operators. Also, my microphone was busted for most of these streams, so I guess I should have seen that coming looking back on the comments telling me my audio sounded like I was recording in the back of a paratrooper airship. Kids, do not buy a Blue Yeti Nano for voiceovers you're going to have a bad time. So if this video sounds okay to you, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. And if it doesn't, let me know in the comments.